guys welcome or welcome back to my channel today we're going to be setting up my August pages for my bullet journal this is a a5 size from Archer and Olive as usual let's go ahead and flip through the previous month July to see how that's going I am really enjoying this color combination and I love the fireflies I think everything is very pretty um, this weekly setup is something I've been using for a while and it just really works for me right now. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started with August. I was inspired really early on in the month. I think I started sketching my August pages like July 3rd. Um, I was first inspired by an image I found on Pinterest from Steady and Stuff X94, uh, which was a Portuguese tile step-by-step -step tutorial. I saw that and I thought at first that they looked a little bit Greek or at least they reminded me of the white and blue aesthetic that I associate with the Greek coast. Um, from there I quickly decided to just do a basic Greek lettering font and this theme kind of took life. Uh, the Archer and Olive sub box for June brought in the final piece of inspiration for me but I will talk about that a little bit more in a few minutes. The colors that I'm using for this setup are blue and dark blue from my Statler Tri Plus Fine Liners. It isn't ideal for filling in large areas because it's like a 0.3 millimeter tip, but the uh, the fine details of these tiles, Tombow just wasn't going to do it for me. Um, I'm I'm too heavy-handed to get really fine lines out of Tombows. Here you see I'm kind of struggling to put pen to paper. Um, I was so in love with the pattern and the design that I was afraid to mess it up and I didn't want it to come out looking crazy. So maybe you can relate, but I definitely struggled a lot setting this up, just not wanting to make it turn out differently than what I had in my mind. So Study and Stuff had four tiles in their step-by-step -step image that I saw on Pinterest, but because of how I laid out the pattern, I needed six um, different tiles to make the layout work. So I came up with in the top right corner there, uh, and then the X looking one, uh, I came up with those on my own, just kind of taking some elements from the other ones, um, you know, corners, lines, dots. I filled in the different portions of the tiles in dark blue versus the blue, and I know you can't really tell the difference on camera, but in person there is a noticeable difference between like the more muted lighter blue and the richer darker blue, which is almost like an indigo purple color. It's so blue. I will say I see a lot of shaky lines here in the playback, but in the grand scheme of things, once it's all filled in, you don't really see little minor mistakes. I made so many mistakes on this first page and on every page, but it hides really well in the, uh, in the pattern. So I'm going to zoom out here in just a moment. Um, this is when I realized that on the viewfinder, the colors look the same and you can't really tell the difference so I zoom out to see if it gives it a better image quality and then I figured you don't need to see me repeat this pattern for the whole page so I'm gonna do a time jump uh, shortly after that just to when the tiles themselves are finished and we can move on to the next part of the setup
you can see how even with all the mistakes, the pattern looks great when it's done to a large scale, which is one of the reasons why I like patterned spreads, uh, patterned themes. For the quote this month, I went with a definition of a Greek word, eunoia, uh, to tie in the Greek theme. Eunoia is a pure and well-balanced mind, a good spirit. It also means beautiful thinking, which I think is amazing um, and ties in very well with my word of the year, healing. Uh, the final element to this theme, I wanted to add a pop of color other than blue to kind of jump off the page. Uh, originally I was going to do lemons because, you know, Greece, lemons, they use it in a lot of their food, being on the Mediterranean, but lemons was the theme of July 2022 on YouTube. It was a big part of the Archer and Olive sub box, so a lot of people went with a lemon theme for July, I guess. Um, so I wanted to do something different. Plus, I had already done blue and yellow in my setup pages, and the Fireflies theme in July used blue and yellow. So I wanted something at least slightly different. So I took my brown fine liner and made these tree branches, just like I would for lemons even. Uh, and then I took my green fine liner and I did the outline of the leaves and then the main line down the middle. And then I just did a bunch of scribbles. I didn't want big blocks of bright green color. So I just wanted like the image of leaves here. And that's why they're scribbly and not filled in. I really like how that aesthetic turned out. And then for the oranges themselves, I did my Crayola Super Tips that you see here in orange and red-orange. I don't know the exact num names of them. Um, and then just kind of did this shadowing and some stippling to give the orange peel like some life. And then I did my number 10 Sakura Jelly Roll white gel pen uh, to highlight. And that final bit of inspiration that sold me on this theme was this washi tape from the Archer and Olive sub box for June. It has oranges and little blue flowers and it is what made me decide to do a Greek theme um, with those tiles and oranges. So love how that turned out but for my calendar spread I just repeated the same pattern from the previous page for the tiles down the right hand side only. And I wanted to give you another opportunity to see how they're set up one by one. But again, it, it probably took me an hour to do this page. Um, and I didn't think you'd want to watch all of that even sped up since it's a repeating pattern. So I am going to go ahead and skip to when that's finished after a little bit of a preview. Not really a preview. A little bit of the footage of me actually setting up the tiles. And this is the morning after. I got this lamp for my desk so I can finally film at any time of the day, which is, I think, gonna make things a lot easier. I know I talked about possibly taking uh, a step back from filming my setups. Uh, this desk lamp I'm hoping will help that because I won't feel so tied down to certain times of the day or certain days of the week even. But yeah, after two hours on that cover page and all those little tiles, my hands were just dead. So this is the you know first thing the following morning. So I googled, and it turns out that Greece is an exporter of oranges for Eastern Europe, particularly to Germany, Romania, Poland, and Serbia. And Greek oranges uh, for export are mostly grown in the Arda region of Greece. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. Uh, where the oranges are especially sweet and they ripen earlier than other uh, regions of Greece. The cuisine in the Arda region is also heavily influenced with the citrus flavors from the oranges. Um, side note, they also planted a bunch of orange trees in on the streets of Athens, but those orange trees um, are smaller and bitter and not for consumption, so you don't eat those raw, so they're just for decoration. And oranges are referenced in Greek history going all the way back to the Herculean myths. Hercules was asked to bring apples of Hesperides, Hesperides, 
Hesperides. I think it's Hesperides, um, which was a gift from Gaia to Hera when she married Zeus and was kept in the garden of the gods. Um, he was said to have cut three golden fruits right in front of the guards and brought them to the king who demanded them. The golden apple of Hesperides, based on its descriptions, are believed to have been citrus fruits, most probably oranges as we know them today. Leave a comment for me and let me know what your favorite variety of orange is. I tend to prefer Cara Cara oranges, which are similar to how they're describing Greek oranges, uh, very, very sweet naturally. Um, and I usually do see them earlier on in the year uh, than like the blood oranges and the navels. I'll see Cara Cara oranges first. Cara Cara, not sure how that's pronounced either. back to the calendar spread. My boxes are five by five and I put the August title in the top left. That is three boxes tall, I believe, um, in the Greek style font. And I added the orange branches and used the orange super tip to make dots um, for each day of the calendar month within those boxes. Very simple setup. You can take any element of it, leave it out. You can do a Dutch door, you know, if you wanted to, and not have that border on the right hand side. You could use that space for goals or events. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of my standard layout. Usually I do six by five, but because I wanted to add these oranges, I kind of shortened it to five by five to make sure that I would have room. Normally I say the calendar spread is my favorite spread of a setup, but I honestly don't think I can pick in this setup which spread is my favorite because I am so in love with all of them. Um, but feel free to let me know which of these spreads is your favorite or which one you think looks the best aesthetically or the most balanced, whatever um, your reason for preferring that one is. Um, I like this one specifically because of the pops of these orange circles for the days of the month. Um, I think that this spread does seem very balanced in terms of color. The orange really pops out, the blue is very vibrant, and I just like it. This washi tape, I will say, was really like not working with me. It doesn't seem to want to stick or stay in place, so I was having to roughly measure it. Um, so here I just skipped the whole thing of coloring in the tiles and just went straight into the habit and mood tracker but I did shorten, because I needed more space, I did shorten the tile pattern to just two columns instead of three uh, for this page. I went with the standard mini calendars for the habits and for the mood, I am sticking with this more detailed chart of emotions versus just my general mood for one day or how good a day was versus another. I do feel like I can see trends in multiple emotions um, with this method here. And here's more of a close-up where you can see how I do the orange branches. I just fill in the branches with the brown fine liner and then you'll get to see kind of how I do the leaves on this one as well.
And then I go to the bandage, I cut my finger, I cut my thumb, took a little slice off with the, uh, the mandolin on my cheese grater, slicing some potatoes. So I had to wrap that up because I didn't want that to be on camera. Also by this point, I'm just so impatient with myself. Uh, my hands are so tired again and I'm just trying to get through it because I know I only have one page left after this. And just some Greek looking numbers and that will uh, finish off this spread. Moving on to the brain dump and goal spread, I reduced the border down to one column here as you'll see, and you'll see me kind of rushing through to get all the dark blue done first. I do kind of show you how painstaking this process is with this spread because I don't actually skip the tiles. Um, so yeah, you can kind of see how much time, because this is sped up six times, 600%. Um, so you can see how long it does actually take. this far please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already and let me know what theme you're thinking of doing for August are you torn between a couple of different ones um, is there anything from this spread or from this setup that maybe inspired you to create a border of tiles or maybe um, adopt a more detailed mood tracker uh, to track mental health anything like that I am definitely in love with these pages and I cannot wait to start using them again. Um, but yeah, just to finish off the brain dump, I added one little branch with a couple of oranges on it and my standard uh, personal goals page that I've been using since last month and then this is the final flip through. So I thank you so much again for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.